Hallelujah. Thank you, dancers and choir. That was awesome. Remain standing. I have a great honor to introduce to you a man who God is using powerfully in the nation of India. It's not easy to build a church in India. It's a Hindu nation with even a Hindu government at this time. But God has been very, very kind to us. In fact, uh, we're going to need to not stream this. Is that correct? Does it, and does it create a problem for you in India? Okay. So at least those of you there at Bridge and those of you in Kula get to see this message. But um, our guest today pastors one of the largest churches in the nation. In fact, he's building the largest church building in the nation to seat 25,000 people. That's four times larger than the largest auditorium in Hawaii, the HIC. And uh, he has a church of about 50,000 now. Those are actual people sitting in pews, not dreaming numbers. I was born in India. I know the miracle that is. And uh, when I heard that he was going to be coming to the Global Church Network, I said, he's going to preach to my people. Just to see him and to hear his voice is an inspiration because I know that God has used him mightily. He's a, great hum he's a humble man. He's received many great accolades and leadership. But he's come to just bless you with a word. Would you welcome Pastor David Mohan as he comes. Don't you love technology? It's awesome. <laughs> it's a great joy and privilege for me to come to your church and preach the Word of God. We love Pastor James Morocco. I met him long time back in South Korea. He told me he was born in India and also in a very special place, Calcutta. And we learn to love each other because he is white, but his heart is in India. <laughs> and uh, he ate all the junk foods in Calcutta and in India. And that is why he is so powerful. <laughs> it's my joy to be with my wife this time and we have been married uh, more than 50 long years. We celebrated <laughs> our 50 years wedding anniversary last month 19th and uh, this year is a very special year because I'm going to celebrate my 75th birthday and also uh, 50 years of ministry in Chennai started our ministry in 1973, November 25th, so we are building this great building, and God has been so faithful to us. And I learned about this ministry, how generously you give to other ministry, invest into a lot of ministries, starting many churches around the nations. That is why God's presence is here. God's blessing is here. God is going to take this ministry to the next level. You will see an anointing 
upon your life and in this church there is going to be a prophetic utterance that is going to come and bless the people and a lot of healing will take place in the near future and awesome miracles are going to happen shall we lift our hand and praise god father we pray right now that you are in our midst right now your presence is in our midst right now father bless all the families all the people those who see in online will be blessed tonight today father glorify your name your name alone in jesus name we pray everyone say amen, amen. if you have your bibles please turn to the book of matthew chapter 7 verse 24 matthew chapter 7 verse 24 Therefore everyone who hears these words of mine puts them into practice is like a wise man I know this works amen Thank you Built his house on the rock the rain came down the streams rose and the winds blew and beat against that house yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock three things that i am going to speak to you build your personal life strongly second build your family life strongly thirdly build your church life strongly how to build a strong personal life hear the word of god and practice the word of god in your life you will live a strong commitment to the lord rain may come wind may blow you may go through a lot of difficulties but you will stay strong in the lord because you practice the word of god when you study the scripture matthew chapter 5 6 and 7 that is what god speak to you practice these words that you are building on your house on a strong foundation that you will not be shaken what are the important things that you have to practice chapter 5 matthew chapter 5 verse 3 says because blessed are the poor in spirit for their for there is the kingdom of heaven blessed are the poor in spirit you know what is poor in money what is the meaning of poor in spirit sometimes in india if you wear white clothes top to bottom close your eyes don't talk to anyone you look like a humble person but inside you are a different person but what is poor in spirit poor in money is a real beggar begs daily with a bowl to get something for his food but nowadays you don't see real beggars the beggars they have cell phone now and they call the other beggar don't come to this street i am begging on this street <laughs> but the real beggar every day he begs in his bowl and he spends that and the next day he has to beg to have food in his bowl the same way 
in your spiritual life you need to pray every day you need to read the word of god every day you need to have the grace of god upon your life on a daily basis you need to have the power of the holy spirit on a daily basis you can't live in your yesterday's anointing you can't live on what you have read on yesterday every day you have to come before the lord lift your lift your hand and pray that the, the holy spirit is going to bless you from today onwards you 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 just come before the lord on a daily basis and ask the lord to bless you and he will give you fresh anointing he will give you fresh grace and he will give you fresh word of god and he will give you fresh revelation of him that is what living in the poor, in poor in spirit the second thing is blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted we mourn for many things if somebody hurt us somebody speak very bad words about us or if a husband is doing something you don't like it you cry you mourn but mourn if you committed any sin in your life you know when you come to church we look like an angels but when we go back to your home you look like a devil <laughs> lot of things that comes out of us when we worship it's so nice today we saw that beautiful worship it's so nice but a lot of irritation is there inside your heart a lot of anger is there a lot of things that comes out you know you see the flesh this here it's a dangerous one when the temptation comes when your mind accept the temptation you commit any sin at any time but you have to be very careful on a daily basis if anything comes into your life you mourn and confess that sin in your life live a holy life you will live a strong life nobody can shake you satan will be under your feet god will be with you and god gives you authority over anything in your life that you can live happily god bless you the third thing is in your life you must have a pure heart you see god when you have a pure heart you are a blessed man if you have a pure heart how to receive a pure heart keep a good conscience if you commit any sin against your fellow men confess to them don't confess to god when you commit certain sins against your brothers if you commit any sin against god you confess it set right those things if you confess god is ready to forgive all your sin and you will have a clean heart this is what it's needed this days you know our minds are corrupted seeing lot of things around us your thought life must be clean you need to have a grace of god to have a clean thought life what all the bad things that comes into phone all kinds of things will corrupt your mind but it is possible to live a victorious life if you confess yes you don't live in sin we are not perfect people we all fall into certain areas but confess it come out of it and have a clean heart you see god there that is what it needed of this hour these days we need to have a real pure heart and also when you read 
this chapter 5 verse uh, 14 uh, or 11 blessed are you when people insult you persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you blessed are you when people insult you persecute you falsely say all kinds of evil against you rejoice it's very difficult to rejoice when people say good things about you when people say bad things about you and they if they falsely accuse you that is where are you living a strong life or are you living just on sunday's life dear people of god if you are really committed to christ some people will definitely accuse you if you are on the side of satan all the time nobody will accuse you if you are living for god if you are totally committed to christ people will definitely talk bad things about him you know one time some 3 or 4 years back some of my close friends some of a dear ones started to talk against me they started to write false false things against a family my ministry somehow they want to put me into jail at least uh, one day so they they gathered together put up an office they were working against me i didn't understand why all these things are happening in my life one fellow put up a studio half an hour he was talking against me put up a nice video and uh, put it uh, put it in the youtubes and all over a police came to catch me in my home i thought nobody will catch me i didn't do anything but police came myself my wife ran away from our home and took up a car riding to the next town and took a flight we flew away from that place so many things happened we were living in a small room praying lord save us we didn't do anything wrong they are accusing us as i was praying god spoke to me son you have got a great influence influence in the city nations but now you are running for your life hiding somewhere here you must know you are nothing before people you must learn that i said lord thank you for teaching me this lesson after a difficult situations like this many times we we have to learn the lesson when we go through persecutions and difficulties there you have to rejoice in the lord but all the problems were solved with no time all the fellows who wanted to put me in jail they went into jail dear people of god sometimes you don't understand why problems are coming to your life but be strong humble yourself rejoice in the lord shall we lift up our hand and pray right now you may be going through some problems difficulties you yourself do not know why such things are happening in your life in your family but 
God is always with you and he will bless you he will definitely touch you and change your life for good and you will see that anointing coming upon you rejoice in the lord when you are falsely accused and bless the lord that time god bless you secondly your family life must be strong these days every church everywhere in the whole world the family is shaken a lot of problems that we are facing in our families we must build a strong family we must see our children coming to the church with us and together worshiping the living god that is the blessing that god wants to bless you in order to have a strong family you need three things if you read uh, proverbs chapter 24 verse 3 and 4 three things you need for your family one is knowledge second one is understanding third one is wisdom of god knowledge we understand in order to be an engineer or doctor we spend lot of years to study and get that knowledge but when you get married you don't study anything at all you just go for dating and you think everything is going to be like heaven before marriage but after marriage you find that you are in a hell <laughs> because you don't study you don't acquire knowledge how to live with a difficult wife difficult husband marriage is nothing else dying to yourself that is marriage god brings two different kinds of people put them together to die people don't understand these things if you die to yourself you will be happy at any situation If you don't die you will accuse each other If your wife is giving problem she is really helping you to understand what is inside of your life You work out your salvation don't work out your salvation of your husband or wife If you are getting angry you find out oh the anger is already there my husband really helps me to find out that anger in me he is an angel of god bless him don't divorce him people don't understand these things you know i thought i i i was a very soft fellow on the earth very meek fellow after i got married within one month time i found out i am the worst sinner in the world <laughs> then i worked out my salvation day by day i am still working out <laughs> dear people of god need to understand each other well god created men differently women differently men they don't communicate well they wanted to communicate but they don't communicate well i have been trying for the past 50 years <laughs> i wanted to do that but i am not able i i i my wife will ask what happened when you go out and lord i will say everything is good that's all it comes out but when my wife goes out when she comes back to our home she will narrate the story <laughs> so wonderfully within 5 minutes time what all hap- has happened 3 days <laughs> but i will finish it with one word everything's good fine that's all men they don't 
they are not detailed person you must understand that wives are emotional people they cry they themselves do not know why they are crying you ask them why are you crying they don't say it out the husband has to be a prophet to find out <laughs> what was the problem but she has 101 reason for, for her to be but she doesn't say that she doesn't talk they they keep silence for sometimes you go and talk to them they are emotionally upset husband must know all those things otherwise you will be thinking why i got married with this woman <laughs> they are emotional people they talk emotionally they think emotionally they act emotionally you must understand that they have a cycle in their body that goes into different times they their moods are different husband must understand those things that is the time he must love his wife that is the time he must care take care of her care and love that's the most important thing and uh, husband always expect respect respect him if he drives a car let him drive his car don't tell him turn this way don't do this don't put the brake he knows how to put the gray brake you don't trouble him respect him before others don't criticize him don't criticize before before your children he needs respect these are the simple ways that you must understand each other live together pray together in an agreement you will see your house will be blessed your children will be saved this is what it should happen in your family understand each other you need to have wisdom of god the wisdom of god is pure the wisdom of god is meekness peace and joy build your house on that line you will see your life will be blessed your family will be blessed shall we lift our hand and pray right now that every one of your family that you go through lot of problems and chaos and confusion never you ever plan to divorce your family stick on together you will see greater things happening in your life do not complain about each other live together with great joy you will see the presence of god and angels of host will be visiting your family god answers your prayer god will bless your family businesses and god will bless you to the nations of the world you will be a blessing to many many family outside of the church this is what god wants to do in this church in the near future that your families will be a great blessing to the neighbors those who are living close by you that you are going to show forth the love of jesus christ to those people thirdly you must build a strong church bible says matthew chapter 16 verse 18 says and i tell you that you are peter and on this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell hades will not overcome it building a strong church here when you read peter had a revelation that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God that is the rock build your church on the revelation that Jesus Christ the son of the living God don't build your church on some doctrines don't build your church on one person 
don't build your church on any other matter except jesus christ is the foundation as pastors and elders and leaders we are here to lead you towards christ not toward us many many preachers they build the people toward them don't you ever worship any prophets you know people will go after prophets put your hand and say something they will say something to you it will destroy you don't go after big big people people may come and go god has put your pastor over here listen to your pastor you will be blessed so many people may come and go you will see a lot of things in tv and say we are going to pray for you send your money to to us we are a good ground put all your money on our ministry don't believe that they are not going to pray for you your pastors your elders in the local church will pray for you i tell you they are the best people god has put you put them in this church many preachers may come and go but respect your pastors respect your church respect the vision of the church go along with the vision of the church god will bless you that is what you are going to build a strong church strong church will fulfill the great commission in the great commission evangelism is there the great commission making disciples is there there in the great commission teach what all the christ has taught us every people in the church must be taught properly on a basic things this is the great commission when when you when you are committed to do great commission planting churches making disciples training the people up strongly you see the presence of god in the church church may go through a lot of difficulties i tell you when we were building the church there 73 onwards i've gone through cyclones it destroyed my church building i've gone through fire literally fire came up destroyed my church building literally flood came and destroyed the church the government came against me wanted to take all the property one time still we go through a lot of problems but the presence of god and the power of god the anointing of god is with us and people come to church and be blessed dear people of god win souls for christ join the care groups prayer cells how many of your prayer cell leaders would you please lift your hand prayer cell leaders please lift your hand join take up a prayer cell join with the prayer cells do evangelism nurturing discipleship must take place in that small group system that is that is where that you build a strong church just coming and sitting on a chair on a daily sunday breaking the chair is not your ministry you must build a strong church bring many people into church join them into small group develop them as a disciples you see the presence of god in the church you see miracles happening when you come to church this is what you need to be let us let us close our eyes and pray build a strong personal life to christ build a strong family build a strong church god is going to touch you how many of you want to have a touch of god in your life would you please lift your hand you are going through a lot of problems and trials those who want to have the touch of god would you please stand to your feet stand to your feet come come to the front one one minute come to the front please come to the front and i'm going to pray for you there will be healing taking place in your body there will be 
a peace and joy that comes into your life and your personal life will be set right right now that you are going to connect with Jesus Christ right now lift your hand and pray lord jesus jesus i pray for this dear people hallelujah raka sira mahantu lamaha ma hallelujah god has got a special calling upon you your hand will be fired up and touch the people souls will be added to the kingdom of god but you need to connect with christ and his life he loves you so much he has chosen you for a special purpose but you're going through a lot of difficulties but god is going to be with you and change the course lord i pray for these wonderful people in their life a sweet fellowship of the lord jesus christ is going to come to you for a long time you think that you are far away from him but he never left you his love is so fresh to your life and commit your life to connect with jesus more and more these days take some fasting and prayer go alone with god as a family spend time with god and god is going to speak into your life and your family how many of you want to have a special prayer for your family lord i pray for this dear people for their family life there is going to be a great peace and joy that is going to come father i pray that your grace is sufficient for them and your love will flow into their heart and they that they will enjoy the cause that you have called them to be in and they are going to see the mighty hand of it. no satan can come against you satan is under your feet you are a conqueror that is what you are worshiping god and god will bless you lift all your hand and pray lord for this church and this church will be a strong church in the coming days and all the vision of the church is going to be fulfilled in this island and the next uh, uh, nations of god will be touched and all the workers and the elders and oh lord i pray for all the pastors of this oh god congregation that you will bless them continuously all the care groups will be blessed and multiply these days a strong wind of god is going to blow the revival is going to come in jesus name we pray everyone say amen amen amen, amen. amen. Okay. you may be seated would you do that thank you pastor mohan what a wonderful